Hello everybody, Carolina Tony. Thank you for stopping by my channel. If you're here for the first time, be sure to go down here and click subscribe. After that, ring the bell so be notified every time we put a video out. Today we are in Asheville, North Carolina, and we are going on a haunted tour right after station identification. Be ready. Hey y'all, Carolina Tony here. Thanks for stopping by my channel. Join me as I travel the highways and byways in search of adventure, where we will explore roadside attractions, abandoned places, historical, and even the weird and strange. And hey, maybe a food review or two. Please subscribe. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Be sure to click that bell so you won't miss any future videos. Of Asheville Social Hub. During the warmer months, there are festivals like this going through the entire season. But my story about this spot happens decades into the past, almost a full century. The turn of the 19th into 20th century during the height. Right after the Great Depression, this is where businessmen and bankers jump to their death. Something very interesting is right across the street is a fire department. And the firemen were out playing frisbee, just as they're doing right now. And they saw what looked like a man jump from an upper store window. And of course, they came running over. And when they got to this spot right there, there wasn't anybody there. And they asked the, the bystanders, did you see anything? And of course, no one did. It's because it really wasn't there. Or was it? Right at the base of this hotel, or this office building, X marks the spot. As I get into my story here, I like to, from the beginning. We are here at the Old Methodist Church on Church Street in downtown Asheville. That part of the building is where they hold Sunday service. this church. This church is massive. You can see here at night is very creepy. But they frequently have sightings of a figure, a dark figure pacing during Sunday morning service. And it's been seen by not one or two, but as many as 40 people at a time. But it's always in the same place in this older part of the church. Tell us a masculine figure, the way he's dressed. To the left of this church, on towards the corner, is a more modern section. And a female apparition shows up from time to time here. As we're strolling along on this tour in downtown Asheville, it is just really neat to call this out. Just check it out down through there. Just everybody's walking around. Before I get into this one, let me explain to you guys. This is going to be my last outdoor story. My complex, mostly local retired senior citizens live here today. Originally, this was a five-star spa of a hotel. 
was built by E.W. Grove. The same guy that built the Grove Park Inn, July 17th, 1936. The weekend, a young 19-year-old girl, a girl by the name of Helen Clevenger, was staying as a guest here at the hotel. She had come to the area to look at some colleges. You know, being a 19 years old, she had just completed finishing school. This is what a young lady does for 30. Her uncle lived here in the county to pick her up on Monday to show her around the campuses. Indeed, in the center of the room. Now they call the police immediately, obviously. When the police arrive, back then, the Asheville police didn't have a lot of money for photography. But the police did take like 10 pages. A very dutiful, very thorough, handwritten note on what the crime scene looked like. I have read those notes. They vividly describe cuts and lacerations along her face. But the killing blow was a gunshot wound right in her midsection. In the 1930s, around 1936, this hotel was where a lot of famous people stayed. Buffalo Bill, uh, some presidents. It became to be known as the murder hotel. A young girl was murdered in her room and they couldn't find out who killed her. And of course, the true crime magazines up in New York got wind of it. And this thing was highly publicized. And the hotel here was losing money like crazy. It was a five-star hotel and it was hard to keep this thing going. And all of a sudden, a young bellhop confessed to the murder and the state of North Carolina fast-tracked his trial and four days later he died in the gas chamber in Raleigh, North Carolina. And his last dying words was, I didn't kill that girl, I was coerced. So basically what he was saying, he was forced to confess so this hotel could start back making money again. The bellhop that was accused of the murder, his job was to operate the elevator. And they say to this day, the elevator goes up and down without anyone in the elevator at all times of the night. Here are some rocks from a, a USO crash site. Collected these in 1997. And an alien crystal skull. Here is a Bigfoot plaster cast. This is a replica of the Hope Diamond. During the Will Harris rampage in 1906, Harris has changed bullets on the street with Judge Spears Reynolds. Neither man hit the other, but 26 years later, the judge's brother, Robert Reynolds, became a senator from Asheville, known as Bunkum Bob. And Bob lived in the nearby Reynolds mansion. At 57, he married a 19-year-old Evelyn McLean. She was the last private owner of the Hope Diamond. Evelyn's son had already died in a car crash shortly before visiting Asheville with the jewel, and her daughter died of a drug overdose. And Ev Evelyn's philanthropy husband died in a sanitarium, and the, f and the family newspaper, the Washington Post, went bankrupt. Believe it or not, there's an article that talks about the 
murder that occurred in the Battery Park Hotel in this magazine. Here was Evelyn's room. Said a red light comes on in there from time to time and there's no one in that room. Here's a picture of Judge Galleon Roberts, the mayor that shot himself in the mouth with a pistol right after the depression. Apparently there are some vampires hanging around Asheville. And what's creepy museum would not be complete without a vampire killing kit. Ooh. Okay, check this out. Baby shark net 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 baby shark net 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 <laughs> Okay, here's a pretty cool story. This is not the real mummy, but he was known as the the Duke, or the Duke, said for six years a mummified corpse was paraded around downtown Asheville. Sidney Lascelles was a con man from Austria who traveled the country claiming to be an English Duke. He died here from tuberculosis in 2004, and nobody claimed his body, so it was mocked and celebrated twice a year in our streets, and they searched for a royal heir. In 1910, a woman claiming to be his sister-in-law claimed the body and paid a hefty bond. However, no one was certain what she did with the dead man. Some say she was actually one of his ashamed 20-plus illegal wives, and she had him cremated. Hey, look. Here's something from home. I saw the lizard man in Skateboard Swamp in South Carolina. Okay, everybody, that ends our tour of the Asheville Haunted Walk and here ending at the Mystery Museum. Hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have for now. Y'all have a good day.